Hello and welcome to the unit devoted to Guy Brousseau in the ICMAI Awardees Multimedia Online Resources Project, ICMAI Amor. This module number zero will present some aspect of Brousseau's career and background. Guy Brousseau received the first ICMAI Felix Klein Award in 2003 for his lifetime achievement in mathematics education research. Born in 1933, he became primary school teacher at the age of 20, like his wife Nadine, his long-life partner in many aspects. All his life, Guy Brousseau had a passion for mathematics and for teaching, and he got the pleasure to see students learning how to do mathematics. During his military service in the late 50s, he spent some time in Paris where he managed to follow some of the first classes of the emerging new maths. Back in his village, he started to experiment new maths in his everyday teaching. He was aware of most of the work of the time in psychology, like Piaget's and the new pedagogues like Célestin Freinet. He subscribed to their ID, but he also rapidly saw the limit of these approaches and the necessity to build something new. In 1960, while reading an article on Georges Papi's work in Belgium, he came across a reference to Lucien Svelli's recent book, Modern Presentation of Elementary Mathematics. In this book, he immediately saw some convergent views with his own reflection and decided to write to Lucien Felix. In his letter, he explained his experiment and attached some of his own work. Lucien Felix, a brilliant mathematician who had been the assistant of Henri Lebeg, must have been quite impressed. Indeed, she soon decided to come and see Guy and Nadine Brousseau in their village in the southwest of France, where they hold the only two classes in a local school. This is the beginning of a close collaboration and real friendship. In July 1961, Lucien Félix invited Guy Brousseau to join her to Fune Copé in Switzerland for the 15th meeting of the International Commission for the Study and Improvement of Mathematics Teaching, known from its French acronym CIEAEM. C -E -A -E -M. This commission was founded by the mathematician, pedagogue, and philosopher Caleb Gatteneau from the University of London with the collaboration of Gustave Choquet, French mathematician, and the Swiss psychologist Jean Piaget. Through his participation to the CEOM, Brousseau got the opportunity to meet several key international actors of the math education world. Lucien Félix also introduced Brousseau to André Lichnerowitz. André Lichnerowitz was president of ICMAI from 1963 until 1966, and then he led the commission in charge of implementing the teaching of new math modern mathematics in France until 1973. When they met for the first time in 1964, unlike what Lichnerowitz might have anticipated, Brousseau didn't try to put forward his own activities enthusiastically claiming that they were what, need, what had to be done. On the contrary, he showed his doubts and the difficulty he encountered at the time in his own experiments. He also explained his fear that the new math reform could be a failure if there was not enough previous research work, experimentation and observations. Lichnerowitz understood straight away that this primary school teacher had something special and he challenged him to build a research program that he defined as the analysis of the boundary conditions for a pedagogical experiment in mathematics. The two met regularly about twice a year until the end of the 60s. This contact with the academic world finally led Brousseau to go back to university and accomplish a bachelor in mathematics. In Bordeaux, Lichnerowitz recommended him to an old friend of his from the École Normale Supérieure, Jean Colmès. 
Thanks to this important support, Bruce Lowe managed to have an academic career in the Department of Mathematics, despite his un unconventional background. During this period, Bruce Lowe built some strong connections with a local mathematics trainer for primary school teachers in the regional École Normale. This group, known as the Group of 16, formed the first circle around Bruce Lowe. Some of them later became his first doctorate students. They were working within the Regional Centre for Pedagogical Documentation, CRDP, run by a very active linguist, René Laborderie. This is where they created, in 1966, the Centre for Research in Mathematic Teaching, the CREM, a laboratory where Brousseau had the opportunity to confront his view with his colleague and realise his first experiments. In these years, Brousseau's ideas and research programme came to maturity. At that time, the mathematic teaching tradition mainly consisted in the elaboration of a consistent text and discourse in order to explain as clearly as possible what mathematics should be before letting students do exercises and solve problems to put their knowledge into practice. The new pedagogue of the time had already put forward some different paradigms for cognition, not just mere transmittive tradition. And the idea that students should be more active was getting widely shared under the general denomination of constructivism. In mathematics, some activity had been developed and successfully experimented, usually only in very local context though. Yet, there was no specific theoretical framework able to justify the good quality of the choices and the benefit they would offer. This is what Brousseau wanted to do. Piaget's work attracted him. However, Piaget's goal was to organize tasks revealing young children's cognitive process, but not to teach them how to do mathematics. Yet, Brousseau understood that Piaget's work offered a good basis of reflection for an alternative to traditional teaching. Indeed, it inspired him the idea to analyze the conditions under which some mathematical concept could be consistently, consistently learned. To say it short, Piaget was analyzing the cognitive process in certain conditions. Brousseau wanted to analyze the situation that would make the learning possible. Like Brousseau himself used to say, Psychologists study mathematics in order to better understand students, while didacticians study students in order to better understand mathematics. In 1965, Brousseau wrote an experimental school book of modern mathematics for grade 1, age 6. Let's listen to his views on what he wanted to do at that time. This short video is extracted from an interview made for ICMI 14. This was filmed in Brousseau Horn House in Talence in 2016. Autrement dit, il faudrait imaginer un enseignement qui, se, un enseignement qui ne passerait pas par la description des savoirs, mais par une certaine pratique. Il faudrait enseigner au maître cette chose-là, Mais pour enseigner, je peux concevoir une leçon ou une situation, je n'appelle pas de situation, je peux concevoir, qui peut marcher. Enseigner au professeur comment il faut la faire marcher, qu'est-ce qu'il faut faire ou pas faire, ça fait déjà beaucoup plus. Lui enseigner pourquoi il vaut mieux faire ça qu'autrement. Alors c'est énorme, le travail à refaire va apparaître énorme. Et le petit fascicule que j'ai publié est un petit fascicule, c'est un, une provocation. Je propose un programme... On voit, on voit apparaître l'algèbre, on voit apparaître des petites équations, on voit apparaître des, des objets extrêmement euh, euh, curieux pour une formation. Il y a bien des nombres, mais ils sont introduits de manière un peu bizarre. Il y a des, bon, il y a des classes équivalences, on écrit des égalités, bref. C'est très ambitieux et il n'y a aucune explication, parce que c'est dans les explications qu'en général on produit les phénomènes euh, parasites. À ce moment-là. Donc, c'est des phrases qu'on dit aux enfants et qu'est-ce qu'ils ont à faire ou pas faire qui apparaît là. Et déjà, je ne vais pas dire que j'ai déjà désespéré, mais j'ai mesuré cet énorme travail 
je ne vois pas comment on peut éviter les erreurs des méthodes traditionnelles. Les gens utilisaient, les professeurs, les enseignants utilisaient tous les ressorts de la, de la rhétorique pour convaincre les élèves, pour le, les éclairer, pour représenter. La compréhension était autre chose. C'était pas le, le projet n'était pas. On, on, on expliquait bien et l'enfant comprenait ou pas. Si tu veux, c'était on ne savait pas quoi faire avec l'incompréhension de l'élève. In Brousseau's approach, observation is fundamental. This is what nourishes a theoretical construct and not the contrary. This bottom-up perspective is essential to have in mind in order to understand the concept of the theory of situation. This methodology was totally new at that time, in education and in many other fields. Brousseau claimed that one of his sources of inspiration has been the work of some semiologists who had built theoretical framework to analyze films. Indeed, in order to build theory from observation, one needs to organize tools to make the observation consistent. To fulfill this goal, the crème was not sufficient anymore. It was a laboratory, but Brousseau also needed a field for observation. The first step in this direction was made possible by the creation in 1969 of the Institute of Research in Mathematic Education, the IREM, in Bordeaux, like rapidly everywhere in France. That led to the building of the Centre for Observation and Research in Mathematics Education, the COREM, officially created in 1973 and attached to a primary school, Jules Muchelet, in Talence, near Bordeaux, with Nadine Brousseau as headmaster. The COREM, which existed until 1999, benefited from an institutional support. In particular, there were three teachers for every two classes, which means that every teacher had a third of extra time devoted for preparation, but also for feedback and participation to research. In the first year of the Corem, Brousseau created and experimented didactical engineers covering most of the mathematical curriculum from nursery to primary school, age 3 to 11. One of the most famous research works is the one he led with his wife Nadine about rational and decimal numbers. This work, published in 1986 by the IREM in Bordeaux, has been translated in 2014 with the collaboration of Virginia Warfield and published by Springer under the title Teaching Fractions Through Situations, a Fundamental Experiment. Let us now listen to Nadine Brousseau explaining what was a collaboration with Guy. One will also briefly see in this video Marie-Hélène Salin, one of the most active persons in the group of the 16. En ce qui concerne les, les, les recherches euh, sur les réseaux rationnels et décimaux, ça a été une très très grosse, une très lourde recherche, un très gros travail et très long. Euh, il y a eu d'abord la première année, la, la première année de, de, oui, la première année quand on a commencé, euh, j'ai travaillé essentiellement avec Guy. On travaillait tous les, il, me, il avait tout dans sa tête, moi j'étais, j'écoutais et il me disait voilà ce que tu vas faire demain, voilà ce qu'on va essayer de faire. Bon. Et le lendemain, exécution, j'étais dans ma classe avec mes élèves et j'essayais de mettre en œuvre ce qui avait été préparé. Euh, et tout de suite après la leçon, en général, je prenais un cahier et je faisais le, j'écrivais tout ce qui s'était passé avec les enfants, ce qui m'a permis par la suite de faire, de regrouper toutes ces leçons dont j'avais le, le canevas vraiment. Et après la leçon, ben, on se réunissait et on voyait ce qui n'avait pas marché, ce qui avait marché, on essayait de faire le bilan de, de la leçon. Et c'est en fonction de ce bilan que j'écrivais que mes fiches après. Mais il y avait aussi les fiches avant. Hein, euh, Marie-Hélène a parlé de la fiche didactique. Cette fiche didactique, elle était absolument indispensable. De mon point de vue, tu étais, euh, ce qui était excellent, c'était la, la vision que tu avais de ce, que tu pouvais, de ce qui allait se passer, de ce qui pouvait se faire ou pas. 
Et si tu ne concevais pas ce qui pouvait t'arriver avec les enfants, tu le faisais savoir. C'était précieux, parce que ça t'arrêtait dans les délires éventuels qu'on aurait pu caresser. Another source of inspiration for Guy Brousseau was the history and epistemology of mathematics. From his reading of Gaston Bachelard's work, especially the formation of scientific mind, he introduced the idea of epistemological obstacle. But he also clearly stated that the historical process that led to the emergence of new mathematical knowledge has to be automatically disqualified as a means of teaching because they are too slow, tortuous and impossible to reproduce regularly in the classroom. In 1975, during a meeting regrouping the initiator of the first research courses in France, namely in Paris, Strasbourg, Marseille and Bordeaux, Jean-Louis Auvert, a mathematician specialist in history and epistemology, proposed that Brousseau's approach should be named experimental epistemology. Indeed, he claimed, you're looking for conditions for the appearance of mathematical knowledge. This is epistemology. You reproduce these conditions and you observe which one produced the expected effect. This is the experimental epistemology of mathematics. However, in this meeting, the decision was made to name the field didactics of mathematics, la didactique des mathématiques, following the German tradition issued from communist work Didactica Magna. The necessity to elaborate research training courses forced Brousseau to make his project an object of research more explicit. It also enlarged the number of researchers working around him. This is when Lichnerowitz's initial proposition turned into the writing of a doctorate that he defended in 1986 with the title Theorization of Mathematical Teaching Phenomena. Brousseau became full professor in 1992 and although he retired in 1998, he remained a very active researcher for a long time. In France and in the French-speaking community, Brousseau's theory of didactical situations, TDS, is used in part, practically all the research works in didactics of mathematics, even if combined with other theories. Many concepts like didactical contract, a priori analysis, didactical variable, devolution, institutionalizations, are now used not only in the context of didactical engineers, but also for the analysis of ordinary teaching. Moreover, Brousseau's work, work had a worldwide impact in the research in mathematical education. The fact that he was given the first ICMI Klein Award is a testimony of this international reputation. Many concepts of TDS are also used in other fields of educational sciences. However, some fundamental concepts and ideas are not always easy to understand. Indeed, a great deal of Brousseau's work as a researcher took place in the classroom and in the interaction with teachers and other researchers. Moreover, many of his writings are not just standard academic publication and are a real challenge for translators. Therefore, taking into account the context in which Brousseau's work emerged is an important key for the rest of the unit. You can now proceed to Module 1 of Brousseau's unit. Thank you for your attention.